Hi everyone, and welcome to this part three of this um, series of videos about building the SFX100 motion platform uh, for sim and flight, ah, oh, sim racing and and flight simulation. Um, okay, so I want to talk about the 3D printed parts which I picked up off my friend Ben last night. So thanks to Ben for printing them. Uh, he's moving on to sets two, three, and four at the moment. Um, but I wanted to trial fit set one, make sure that everything was okay. Um, so let me just take you through the the parts. So I've left a piece somewhere. Okay, so this piece is the foot on the bottom of the actuator rod. This piece is the slider that goes inside the aluminium profile. This is the end cap for the uh, actuator uh, main profile. And you know it's, and this is the top one. They're very similar, but it's easily identifiable that it's the bottom because it's got this heavy chamfer on the, on the corners. Like I say, top cap, motor mount, and bump stop. Right, so one thing I've noticed, and it is mentioned in the documentation on the build, I'm not sure if that's visible, might be just see it, but here, the plastic has, has raised up a bit. Well, that's caused by, that's quite a common problem with 3D printing. It's the distortion caused by the heat and the way that the plastic cools. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be an issue. And according to the documentation, they say not to worry about it. So I'm not gonna worry about it, but it's something that could be sanded flat um, if it was something of concern. So, I'm quite happy with the way that things have come out, except, and it was our fault for, or potentially our fault for slightly jumping the gun. I do recommend that you print about 15 millimeters of this um, slider first to check the calibration and check that it fits nicely in your profile. And when we, we didn't have the profile when we started printing, so we just went for it and we checked it dimensionally and it seemed good. But it had, we had a problem getting it into the profile. Um, and I think it is supposed to be a really good fit. And actually everything else is a really good fit. So for example, the lead screw into this part is a really nice fit. The motor mount into the motor, again, is a really nice fit. So I wasn't too concerned at the time. I thought, oh, it'll, it'll fit, it'll fit nice, but it was a bit tight. Um, so what I've done, see it fits in there nice now. Um, just push that back out, the screwdriver. So what I did was I gave this, these channels a little bit of a sand because um, I could, and I knocked the burr off on the inside where it's been, where it's been sawn, had a little burr. So I did that and it was still too tight to fit nicely. And I remembered a recommendation from the 3D printing community about getting a better surface finish and appearance on 3D printed parts. And the suggestion was that you wipe um, acetone 
over the part and it blend, it sort of melts the very surface of just the very small part of the surface and blends it together um, and because one of the things I do for a living is uh, make fiberglass parts I've got tons of acetone so I did that white uh, so I gave it a little sand knocked a little chamfer around edges just to help lead it in a little bit and then wiped acetone and smoothed the surface finish in all these channels and that got us a much better fit it actually went in and I passed it through the profile a couple of times while it was still slightly soft from the acetone um, and I got it to go through you know quite nicely um, and then I've wiped uh, just engine oil over it and it's sliding up and down in there lovely so I think I'm pre pretty happy with that finish again this is one of the things that I'm looking at maybe I might try and improve the design of I think what they've done is they've this profile here they've tried to get it to to all follow the profile of the inner part of this and um, the problem with that is there's no margin for error so what I'm thinking of doing is taking this flat in the, in the bottom of the groove and like moving it further inboard or making it a radius or something so that I'm I'm only running on that f on the side flats if you like I think that'll give us a better chance of matching that shape properly um, but other than that I'm pretty happy with that it's pretty good pretty good right um, So the other thing that slightly concerns me, that you have to do, and at the same time slightly concerns me, is that you're relying on threads in plastic to bolt this together. So for example, the motor, I'll grab a bolt, so to fit the motor, And then you screw that into this plastic end cap. Now I'm not sure I'm overly happy with that screwing into plastic. Um, it doesn't seem like it's a, a perfect engineered solution. But obviously again, it seems to be working for the people that built uh, built the SFX 100 so far. So I've tapped out these four holes M6 and likewise in the bottom I think there's another four holes there that need to be M6. Oh sorry, yeah four holes that need to be M6 in that. In the slider you've got six holes that need to be tapped M5 um, and I think that's it for, for threads. So one of the suggestions I'm going to make for improving this is that you can get, and in the States they're called Easy Lock, and you can get them in the UK, but they're a little bit more difficult to find. Um, but I think there are other similar solutions. You can get, basically, like these inserts that you've got in the Alley profile, you can get similar ones that are meant for wood but the 3d print the sort of commercial 3d printing industry are using them for putting reliable threads in plastic items um, I'll put a link to some that I've spotted on Amazon that might be um, worth giving a giving a try I'm going to assemble it like this for now um, and see what I feel about the threads how it tightens up and, and maybe review whether or not I put inserts in this uh, like at a later stage and the other thing that slightly concerns me and which would cover this 
or another way of covering this problem as well is obviously there's going to be vibration and threads and vibration don't go together they tend to come apart and I'm having that problem with my OSW motor I need to change some uh, nuts over to nylocks on that so I thought perhaps we could redesign this to instead of screw into the plastic we screw through and put uh, nylock nuts on the back and we don't have room to do it and we wouldn't be getting able to get the part um, assembled if we tried to keep it like it is but I'm thinking if we were to change this profile slightly and essentially mount the motor 40 deg five degrees rotated so that we could for this top cap had you know some triangular ears all round with a hole through with a six mil hole through and we mounted the motor mount like that we could bolt all the way through and put a nylock nut on the bottom there that way we haven't got any risk of threads pulling out and with the nylocks on, we know that they're not going to come apart due to the vibration. Um, so I might draw that up. I might draw, redraw these two pieces. Um, and again, like I say, I'll, I'll, I'll post a link on my Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash GP race sim. I'll put a link in the um, description. Uh, so if if I decide to change any of this um, design, I'll post it there and you can you can download it. Um, okay, so I've tapped that out already. Uh, just a little word. I bought this tap kit from my friends at Rally Design, which is uh, rallydesign.co.uk. And I'm really pleased with it. I bought it primarily because I was desperate for a for a tap for one tap for another job and this was so cheap um i thought i'll buy the set and i'm really really pleased with it um i can't get it as cheap as they sell it anywhere else um so if you're looking for a tap set maybe that's of uh, interest to you i'll put a link in the description so i'm going to quickly tap out these m6s and the m5s in the slider and then we'll sort of dry assemble the bits. Um, I'm still missing a bearing, so I can't finish the assembly of this at the moment. Um, tap goes through really easy, obviously, because it's soft plastic. <laughs> and then the through hole, the swarf comes out. Um, because it goes through so easy, it does. That's one of the reasons that's making me think perhaps we ought to look at the design of this a little bit and just, you know, not rely on um, threads in plastic. But that's just my gut feeling. Like, like I say, everyone that's built these seems perfectly happy with the reliability. No one's saying that there's a, a problem with anything. It doesn't say in the instructions to um, to tap these out. Um, so I'm not sure whether they intend you to just screw the bolts straight into the plastic and sort of cut their own threads. I mean, I'm, uh, I don't, don't think that that's a good way of doing it. I mean, that suggests to me that you risk a making a nasty thread and ruining your 3D printed piece. So I think it's a much better idea to just take the time to tap, tap these out properly. And then we need to swap taps for an M5.
I missed um, mentioning that there's uh, another series of holes here that need tapping. This time M4. Hold the um, bearing in this top cap. Uh, that's the bearing I don't have yet, which is what's preventing me fully assembling this actuator. Um, but according to the tracking, it should be on its way and with us any moment. But anyway, okay, so I'm going to carry on. I'm going to tap that out in four. Uh, right, okay, I've tapped all of those holes out now. Um, like I say, I haven't, still haven't got all of the bits, so I can't go on and build the actuator up properly. But we can dry assemble a few things and just check it out and show you how it goes together. Uh, right, so I went. I didn't follow the link in the documentation for nuts and bolts and stuff because I've got a local supplier to me that I get all my stuff from and turns out it's about £10 cheaper than the link that's in the documentation. Um, the people I got it from, DJ and Victor Supplies, I don't think they've got a website that you can order from, um, but I've got another supplier um, to do an even bigger range that just as cheap um, that do have a like an online store so check the description of the video and I'll put a link to them in there as well okay so building ah that's the other thing in the bolt list on the spreadsheet it suggests a th uh, M8 40 mil I believe it is threaded all the way um, they didn't have any so I got these with the shoulder and as it turns out that's absolutely the ideal it's probably a better bolt anyway um, so don't worry too much about that and the other thing was they didn't have any 85mm long M6s they only had 90 but that seems to work as well so again don't worry about that um, so when it comes I'm not sure which end it goes. Oh, it's the bottom one. The bottom bearing I don't have. The top bearing that came with the lead shafts I do have, but I'm not going to not going to put it together at the moment because until I've got that other bearing, it's no point. Um, so essentially, the ball screw goes into the slider. What we've done with the bump stop. M5. In the four corners. Four mil Allen key to tighten them up. Right, so I'm just gently nipping these up again because the plastic threads on. Not sure how mad I can go. This bump stop goes over the top with the O-ring groove facing towards me. Towards this end with the thread and the bearing land on. Or the fits on the coupling to be driven by the motor. And then two M5s either side to hold that. So another little tweak that I would have to the design is that these the clearance around these bolt heads is just a bit tight. So I might suggest that we um, open those up a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so that's that done. So the top cap goes on by these four M8s with washers. So at the moment, obviously, I'm just dry assembling this so that I can see if there's any problems, uh, get a bit of an understanding of how it all assembles um, because again I don't have the bearings to finish it and it does say in the documentation that, like not to do these up tight to start with because you want to make sure that you've got all the bearings aligned and everything before you do anything up tight and hold it in place. So another suggestion for the 3D printing would be, because it uses, it's quite thick and heavy and uses quite a lot of material and obviously takes quite a while to print. Um, there's no need for this material to be here. So I would, I'm thinking why not we print that with that bit missing like a, in it in four places remove the material which reduces the cost and also um saves time it'll print a lot quicker leave it without that material there um obviously if i decide to, to change the design to do that then i'm not going to be able to do that but maybe i can put you know some holes in it or something um and I might look at putting a window in here. It's got a little window there so that you can get to the grub screws to tighten this coupler up. Um, but I see nothing wrong with putting a little window in there. The only problem with this type of 3D printer is it can't... It's got to have something to print on top of. It can't... For example, you couldn't print it up that, that way very successfully. Because at each layer as it climbs up this side here hasn't got something to print onto and there is isn't there is a guide and I think it's 40 degrees off of vertical which is the maximum amount of overhang you can get away with so we could have a, like a 40 degree angled window in there to remove some material but a small beans for the moment I'm just suggesting it because uh, it would speed up the printing okay so fit in the motor the long m6 by 90 down through into the thread Okay, so that's that trial fitted, and I'm pretty happy with that. So as soon as those bearings turn up, I'm going to finish that and uh, have another play with the drive, and get it moving up and down and seeing what's what. Um, but by the time the bearings come, actually everything else will, will probably be here as well. So we won't be far away from... Um, bolting it to a rig and and giving it a go okay so once again thanks for watching 
Uh, if you like the video, please press like or thumbs up, whatever it is. Subscribe to the channel so you get notifications when I do the next part. Um, thanks for watching. Catch you later.